to share the message of Islam with the non-Muslim world. We have to tell them that we believe in Jesus, the son of Maryam. He is called the son of Maryam because he did not have a father. And he never himself referred to himself as the son of God. In fact, when one of his companions, Peter, was asked, when Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? What did Peter say? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Isa ibn Maryam rebuked him and told him, do not say that. Alhamdulillah. Isa was no more than a man. But he was a, a specially chosen man to bring a message, to bring the Injil. And he was sent not for humanity. Jesus told us himself, he was not sent for all of the world. He told his companions, don't go to the Gentiles. You only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now, alhamdulillah, we found that that message given to Jesus salam, being lost, being misinterpreted, being changed over time. We find in the Bible, and you know the story very well, we have our scholar, Dr. Zachary Naik, alhamdulillah, who has done a tremendous job following the line of Sheikh Ahmed Dida, may Allah have mercy upon him and grant him Jannah explaining the mysteries of the Bible. Alhamdulillah, we have the responsibility, dear brothers and sisters, to bring truth to the forefront and to correct this picture. How is it that we can allow at least one-fifth or one-fourth of the world's population to have the incorrect understanding of one of our prophets and messengers? Why didn't we raise the hand of protest when a certain movie star produced a movie called The Passion that gained such wide acclaim? This movie is now being circulated in the prisons in North America. And they sent, do you know they sent this movie to Muslims who were forced from their country in Africa to immigrate to the United States? They sent that movie, The Passion, to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Where were we when it was produced? Some of us were found even sitting up in the movie. Some of us even bought the movie, The Passion, as if this was true. But yet, we raised our hand of protest when some knuckleheads drew some cartoons. Those are knuckleheads, those are kuffar, those are mushrikeen. They're gonna behave like they're going to behave. They're going to do ignorant things. But we should be about giving the dawah and correcting the picture. We should be proactive in letting the people know who is Isa ibn Maryam. That we believe in Jesus, the son of Mary. That he was born of a miraculous birth. But that did not make him the son of God or God because he was the command of God fulfilled. Kun fayakun. You see, when we begin to attack this lie that Jesus is the Son of God, we will begin to wake the people up to let them know that they have been lied to. And it's time out for lies. A whole nation of people have been obliterated from the earth in the last decade because they were lied to. So we as Muslims have been given the truth and we need to hold it up high. We need not be intimidated by the, the mongrels of falsehood who want to sell lies to keep the masses of the people in ignorance, in darkness. Here's the trick. I'm a father, as many of you are, and I have sons who are born from my own loins, and I also have stepsons. Now, I'm going to just give you a hypothetical situation. You have a man who is a father, but he has only one son, only one 
son whom he may call his only begotten son. But he has stepsons, and he loves all of them. He loves all of them, but he loves this, his natural born son the most. And in the interest of fairness and justice, he tries not to show that to the rest of his stepsons. But his natural born son, he is so proud of him because his son, he's obedient, he's dutiful, he does his homework, his responsibilities, he doesn't hang out, he doesn't go to parties or bars, he doesn't use drugs or alcohol, he doesn't chase women, he does what he's asked to do, he's very responsible, his father's very proud of him, he loves him. But his stepsons, man, they off the chain. I mean, these guys, you guys who, whom I've adopted into my family, you know, you guys, you get in trouble, you go to jail, you party, you chase women. Something has to be done. I mean, we got to stop this. So he gathers all of his sons together. He gathers his natural born son and all of his stepsons together. And he dresses them all. Sons, I love all of you. I have nourished you and raised you up from the time you were young. I fed you from my own hand, changed your diapers. But I'm sorry to say, my stepsons, you are making me very ashamed of you. So because of your wrong actions, because of your misbehavior, I'm going to have to do something. This situation has got to stop. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to punish the son that I love the most, my only begotten son. So his natural born son got it coming, not because he did wrong, but because the stepsons did wrong. Now, I don't know about you, but I know the stepsons I, I have, if they heard me say that to them, they would be glad that they weren't my natural son. I said, boy, I sure am glad I'm not him. And my natural born son, he be trying to get away because he would realize this isn't fair. Where's the fairness in this, dad? Why don't you punish them instead of me? You see the, the parallel? So now what we have today is a whole society of people who believe that they can just do anything they want and then wake up tomorrow accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior.